Hey guys, thank you Sam once again. It's me, Jaws, and Leg Day back again for the action. This time it's gonna be Hanamura. Right. Beautiful so this cherry is blossoms. Well, exactly. And it might be for some beautiful plays as well. Trid said it perfectly, and I want to illustrate that point again. This could be Naga's time to shine once more on these projectile heroes. He can play the junk rat and he can play the far exceptionally well, is whether he actually picks them up. I want to see him play the Genji here on Hanamura. Genji can often be the key to finishing out these assault maps because those dash resets are just so powerful when you're trying to pick up kill after kill after kill after kill. You need to get those clean wipes in order to take an assault map, and Genji can deliver just that. That he can, but you've got to kind of hinder on the uh, on the fact that the support duo actually from uh, Young and Beautiful they're pretty damn strong as well. Oh, they Ding are. specifically, he's he's really just showing what he can do on this Senyata. The guy's picking off two supports at a time. He doesn't really seem to mind too much. Extremely aggressive. And on the Moira specifically, hey, what's uh, Hanamura got a lot of? Tight, confined spaces, which is exactly what Moira loves. So in all honesty, he's speaking to his wheelhouse here. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to dive Ding. He scares me. Just... Straight up. Is, is there anything <laughs> DPS? Is there other supports diving you? Or tanks? Whatever. Like, he's got a right click charge. He's ready to hit some headshots and ready to get some fast transcendences. This time around, he's actually running the Moira on the defense. Naga is on that Genji. He could switch it up in, a, in the next couple of seconds. But if we see this composition come out of the gate here, obviously, this is full classic dive from Copenhagen. Where is the real entry point they need to go for here? Because Ben Best is going to be kind of a mean guy to deal with us on this Reinhardt. It's going to be pretty hard to actually push him off, especially if there's the healing coming out from Gustav and Ding, who are two supports that are incredibly hard to knock down. I, I think that Poppy Fresh is going to come through the main gate. He's going to blink straight into this room we see on the left here while Naga goes through the top right and tries to move around Ben Best. Make him try and move the shield. When he moves it, then you can finally get Marino to go in with the charged Zenyatta shot, and that's your best chance to take down that Reinhardt. The only non-mobile person I've just realized on the side of Young and Beautiful is Ben Bess. Oh yeah. Everybody else has some sort of movement ability <laughs> and Lucio just amplifies all of that as well. So anybody from Copenhagen Flames, they're going to have trouble locking someone down. In fact, we're actually seeing a very, very quick setup here. A uh, switch up of Naga. He's going straight onto that Farah. The pharmacy combo is now out. Indeed, doesn't want the Genji shenanigans. He wants to rule the skies instead. And he's going to have Dredro at his back on the Mercy. Able to rain down these rockets with impunity at the moment. And right away, he's got his eyes straight on the Lucio. Oh. That's a big corner. Oh, Gustav didn't Everybody's want to catch that. Everybody's just lining up for him. He even goes for the cheeky punch. Best Ben goes down. Gustav's going to fall. Danny does find the next couple oh, of kills Dempsey, here. No. <laughs> Dempsey didn't even stand a chance. No bling, uh, no blinks left. Blings. I was going to say ding -ling -ling. No, no, no obling here either. Oh, no obling either. Naga's just ruling the skies at the moment. No one to actually take him down. We'll see if Young and Beautiful want to switch onto this hit scan. Spox is very close to his dragon blade, so I doubt that's actually going to be a reality. Absolutely. Now Naga is going to be able to uh, pretty much lock down all these entry points with those explosive rockets. He's got his eyes on Dempsey once again. That was a quick respawn from a tracer. And oh, he's going to win out the door, but Public Fresh on the other side with a tracer play is going to stick Gustav. He has no healing. Dorito is actually no way near him. Poppy Fresh, like you said, is actually going to take out good stuff here there's a whole lot of aoe healing that's not going to be there but ding popping that coalescence is going to make sure they stay nice and healthy but now he's got to make sure he's nice and topped up as well on the healing mist absolutely both the tanks of Copenhagen players coming in but Ben Best has laid down the shadow doesn't look like he's picked anyone up apart from the diva the diva is going to be there courtesy of Dempsey but can we get anything more Ding's isolated here and that's a beautiful transcendence coming through as well for Marine Lord making sure everybody stays alive but Naga actually gets his own barrage reflected at him Spoxes picks up a kill he's now got his dragon bait available to him and Ding what do you know he's got another coalescence I'm gonna have to contest you then Jaws good buddy I think that was a terrible transcendence from Marine Lord no offense he, too many people had already died, and he put it in, and you can't heal up people who are dead. Maybe you can res them, protect Dredro while he does that, but uh, people got knocked off the edge, and you can't res environmental kills. Naga, going to be coming in again with this Farah, going to try it once more. Look how quickly he's charging the ultimate as well, so he's doing a very good job at Poppy Fresh. Ends up taking out Ben Best before that uh, beat actually went off in the end. There's the coalescence from Ding. Look at the positioning he's taking as well. People want to come at him, that's fine. He can retreat up these stairs with the help of Gustav. And that'll be Danny getting the remake as well. Everybody was too focused, too looking at Ding. And it's all you have to look at Spoxes right now. He's got the blade ready to pop off. Marino has actually switched over to Lucio here to make sure he can get back to that point in time. That blade is so close to being popped out. I think it just did. He's trying to kill Naga, but he doesn't, doesn't quite get to him. Chubbs actually trades the kill up for him. Ben Best gets the charge to make sure he can actually just contest the point for another couple of seconds. It's a 3v3, but with a D-mech on Danny, Naga's going to be able to clean up the rest of the fight. Absolutely. Chubbs is cleaning house of that Tesla cannon 
roasting everyone. Copenhagen Flames coming in, incinerating Young and Beautiful's defense here, and they will be capping the first point with about a minute to spare. Five minutes left on the clock, or thereabouts, Jaws, as we move into point B. Will we see a swap off onto these high ground heroes like the Zenyada, as we see from Marine Lord, and like the Soldier? But no, it looks like Naga is in fact opting to stay on the ferret. Low ceilings in here. We'll have to see what they're going to do with it. Makes a lot of sense, and in fact, actually, he just switched off. He for actually forgo the barrage. Yeah. Don't care about the barrage. It's going to be extremely hard to get that off because you looked at... Actually, Young and Beautiful just switched up there as well. If no one caught that, Spox has actually switched onto the Soldier for a brief moment because they knew Naga still had that rocket barrage available to him. Gustav now on the Arna is going to stick very far back to make sure Ooh, he gets nice purples like that. Very big anti. Now that Tessa Cannon is going to be ripping everybody apart. They're going to have to retreat for the time being. That's how much work one anti can do. And that was about a 25% of gain for Gustav as well. Bobby Fresh opens up the fight yet again oh, with okay. another pulse bomb. This guy is an absolute beast. And Onaga's got his eyes on the supports who are forced into the background. And positioning on the point is all for Copenhagen Flames. It's almost a crew the first tick here. They need to get Danny off the point. However, he's still there contesting. And now it's going to be Dempsey trying to run his way around both Marine Lord and Naga. And he's going to get joined by Ben Best on the top. But Ben Best is going to get cut down. Oh, and Dempsey as well. Naga's going to annihilate the tank dive duo with the tracer. That point is ticking up. The second tick has been achieved as well. Can they actually get back to the point? Oh, so oh, they don't. The Nano Diva came in, but it was li too little too late. A clean 3-3-3 three, three, three on the clock for Copenhagen Flames. And now it's Young and Beautiful's time to attack. Pretty sure lucky number. Go buy a lottery ticket, because that is a nice, nice number. I love the number three. I'm not sure why. Just a little tidbit about me. Hey, there's a six in a team, three apiece. Absolutely. <laughs> the weirdest segue I could have made with that one, but hey, we're going to go with it. It's fine. <laughs> Copenhagen Flames looking for the three. The three, the three one or the three zero, that is. Yeah, they, they want the three out here and... Well, with a time back like that, you can think that they're pretty close to getting it. Young and Beautiful, they need to complete the map, or it's lost. And not only do need, they need to do that, they need to do it with a considerable time bank. That's the thing. And Young and Beautiful have been rather hesitant, I think, to uh, not unleash Spoxes, but Spoxes has been holding on to these ultimates, especially these Dragon Blades, for a long time. At the end there, Marine Lord, they were kind of trying to bait out the Transcendence, like you were mentioning. They managed to get it out. He unleashed the blade and he just got booped away. He was kind of forced to just try and go for the tanks, get a little bit of damage down to them. And his, there was really nothing else he could do there. It was really Dempsey who was actually just cleaning up most of the damage and most of the fights. Spoxes was charging the blade and it is a threat on the board. The problem is he just couldn't make the ult stick. Absolutely. You're, you're exactly right, Jaws. Spox is just holding on to this blade for too long. Over the time that he held it, perhaps he could have built up yet another one. However, it does work out sometimes. While people are worried about Spoxes with that blade, they don't throw in the support outs for other things, like the tank dives. And sometimes you will need to do that in order to sustain yourself. But if you're too worried about the Dragon Blade, sometimes you won't throw in the Transcendence. And they're sticking on this Reinhardt again. Seems to really prefer this, making sure he can protect his backline. But there's, again, there's very little backline for Young and Beautiful. He's playing it more as an offensive Reinhardt. He's just going to go in. He's a brawler. Left trigger, everything. The jungler, right? Let's go. Exactly that. Now, what's the game plan here for Copenhagen Flames? Right now, they've got the Arna. Dredro is going to be able to sit nice and far back. And yeah, Spoxes has instantly recognized that. Naga's going to be sitting high and dry as well. He's got two supports by his Ooh, side. Ben Best, don't catch those orbs, my friend. Marine Lord taking him right down for supports, establishing themselves well. And Ben Best, you, you just can't dive with a Reinhardt all the time. You cannot, and especially of all the spam you're getting through from Naga, from Dredro can even add to that. Marine Lord's going to be sending out the ores, Poppy Fresh in the front line, and Heiko. That shield's going down incredibly quickly. I think Young and Beautiful there, maybe just looking for ult charge at this point, just to, or at least try and get onto the high ground. Ben Best just swinging away. No one really there for the time being. They are, they are going to force their way onto the point. Absolutely, it's time to get on the point and brawl with Ben Best himself. Ben looking to get in onto the tanks here. They're their easiest target. Well, Ding, building his up up very quickly after all the damage was taken fairly early on. Spoxes has found his way onto the top line, but that healing coming onto Naga just eliminates any damage that's really put onto him. Oh, Young and Beautiful, though, are going to just be able to cut their way through the team, regardless of Naga's positioning. And now, six minutes and 50 seconds, you couldn't ask for more, Jaws. Exactly that. They only need, uh, well, if they stall out three minutes here, it'll be around the same time. Copenhagen Flames looking to stall out for the almost seven minute time bank. That's not something you want to see. And if they could see the Young and Beautiful's ult percentages as well, that's definitely not one they want to see either. 92%, they've also got Pulse Bomb, they've got the Sound Barrier. 
They've only got two support ults, and one of them is the only one that's going to be able to heal everybody up. And once again, it's the no McCree's involved, but it's going to be a long range stare off between Spoxes and Marine Lord. Who's going to crack first and pull out the ultimate? Chubbs makes a very aggressive dive, has to back down instantly with that shield. Best Ben, look at his positioning now, just forcing people to actually deal with him. The beat has been dropped, and that might just be it. Naga, Nano Visor out. Tactical Visor is just destroying the front line. As soon as that uh, defense major goes down, there is nothing stopping him from just left clicking you. Nano Visor came out. Young and Beautiful summarily spanked out of the, uh, out of the point. And that was only a two ultimate use as well by Copenhagen Flames. They still had the transcendence. You said who's actually going to uh, who's break. actually going to break first? It wasn't Marine Lord. It was actually Dredro who used it obviously in a more offensive manner, as it being a nano boost. Naga got a bit of infinite sustain from him too. He just pops the field down, and then you get naded, and then you're basically immortal. That's something that's really good about the soldier and the Arna combination. Ideal here for Copenhagen Flames. Probably fresh gets a pick with this pulse If he can try and shut this one down. Oh, but it's going to be Spock just going in deep. They're all the in trans. the corner. There's the transcendence. It just had to come out. Now he's all trapped, all alone, isolated. Can't find Ooh. his way out. Naga finds the last bullet in the bottom of his shoe. Poppy Fresh is going to find the pulse bomb onto Ben Best as well. And look at their domination of the back of the point. No one is touching them there because they can instantly retreat. Those Arna grenades are so deadly when you get uh, when you go, when you go in for the full dive. And here is the answer. Potentially, Gustav's going to be swapping over to the Mercy. Going to be trying to pocket Spoxes on top, I imagine. Make sure he can rain down those damage boosted heavy pulse rifle bullets. Those will do a number on Copenhagen Flames if they find themselves in the shooting range of Spoxes. I think Heiko here has been a, a little bit of an unsung hero. And I, I know I've said that before about someone on Young and Beautiful, but i got to point this out. His defense matrix usage has been so defensive and so accurate that a lot of this damage is just getting completely negated. Nano boost will come oh, out. I can't quite see who is on. Poppy Fresh is just running rampant through people though. Dempsey trying to retreat. At least try and find one kill. Poppy Fresh finds the three piece with that nano. I believe it was a nano monkey. That's a two thread combination. And again, only one ult spent in that engagement. Absolutely. Dempsey managed to take down Poppy Fresh, but it was just a consolation kind of Poppy Fresh has once again built himself up to another pulse bomb. And those pulse bombs are just so important because you can take out someone as they're trying to enter here and you can't take an assault map undermanned. If you come in with five people, you are practically doomed unless someone goes for the most massive clutch. This is Copenhagen. Uh, Copenhagen Flames really showing their experience in playing these high-stakes competitive games. They, you have a couple of ex-StarCraft players on their team. They know what it's like to be under pressure, and they're showing oh, really no. what they could do. That is a big bomb. Ben Best is the only one to fall, however, but that might just be his boxes. <laughs> Chubbs, I don't know what he was doing there. Maybe a little over-ambitious. Ben Best will dream. actually get back up. New Gorilla's dream. Oh, okay. No more dreams anymore. Marine Lord's going to push them all out of your head with a nice little volley there. Poppy Fresh also piling on down goes Spoxes. And Ben Best is going to try and bring it back. The Angry Gorilla. He's got two kills already. Will they be able to get onto a point? They're a little bit undermanned here. He's pushing people into the spawn there, which is extremely important because now it's, it gives him a lot of time to sit on the point. But this time he opts for actually pushing and pressuring the top line. They're going to be able to assassinate the Diva, but that big transcendence from Marine Lord healing everybody up is going to have to be answered. And Ding pops his as well. Oh. Oh, There's the nano blades. Naga finds one. Then no hope for Spoxes. Actually kills himself with his own <laughs> rockets. Danny from afar does manage to get his micro missiles to finish him off. But Poppy Fresh takes out Ding. Ben Bess, nowhere to hide. Accepts his fate. Ends up falling. Absolutely getting put down there by Copenhagen Flames. And what was once such a reassuringly weighty time back, seven minutes, is now two and a half. Where did the time go, young and beautiful? You're now old, aged, and just living on. Dangling by a thread. Heiko's giving away his positioning. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. <laughs> That's all he's doing. It's, 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 that voice it's mental warfare. It is. It's working for them for the time being. Spoxers, Tack Visor, trying to find an entry into this. And this has been his main problem as well, finding entries into these fights. Look at that Diva being so aggressive. Heiko doesn't really seem to mind at all. He knows he has the ultimate available. And Naga found his way to the back line. A Pulse Bomb landed on Ben Best. Poppy Fresh is going to clean him up yet again. Pulse Bomb every single fight thus far. They're down to two minutes remaining now. Four <laughs> minutes has been used. <laughs> okay, Dredro. Are they going to okay. be able to kill him? I don't think so. There's a, there should be a defense matrix to save him. Uh, I, I doubt it. Spox is just, just looking around. There were so many directions the threats were coming from. And he quickly found himself with Without any friends. Now Copenhagen Flames on the defense here. They've set up so many support ultimates to try and carry them through. Marine Lord can let down the transcendence at his leisure. 
They always play it patient. Marine Lord hasn't even used his transcendence <laughs> just yet because he knows his DPS is going to clean up. This is an absolute masterclass on how to defend the second point of Hanamura. But Young and Beautiful, they've got to make something happen now. They've got a minute left. That's two pushes. They have five ults. They have to stagger them here because Marine Lord, he's been extremely patient. One minute, five ults, and a dream, Jaws. What can Young and Beautiful do with it is the question. They keep making the same approach, and that's what I'm worried about. They're trying to get Spoxes up onto this high ground, but every time they come here, the Copenhagen Flames know that they cannot play this on the point. They need to make sure Spoxes can't set up that shooting range. They do the same thing over and over again, Young and Beautiful. They keep trying to push up these stairs. Maybe it's time for a different approach. They really want to get Spoxes on this high ground. They know he has that tactical visor. He actually pops it in the back line there to try and take oh. out the take out the tracer, but it just wasn't enough. And Naga is just in a Ooh, shooting okay. gallery. Okay, uh, Danny actually picks him up. Peaked a little bit too soon there. And Dempsey just trying to retreat. They've got one more push left. Just scatter now. Just reset. They've got one thing left to try. Ding pop transcendence. Spoxes popped his blade. It's now or never. This is so aggressive for Copenhagen. Your flames are not going to let any meterage be gained for free here. They're going to pay for it in blood and they are going to pay very heavily as they try and come in here. Dempsey's going to try and parkour his way up through this window potentially. He doesn't want to go down the main doorway because he'll just take so much damage trying to trigger overtime. He knows he can blink onto the point here to at least trigger that, like you mentioned. Depends if a nicely charged right click from Marine Law can find him. It cannot. Spox is so low, you see, trying to go onto the bridge, gets meat on the other side by Heiko, just gets pinched and absolutely annihilated. Heiko takes out Spox's. Naga's going to find Danny. They're going to be a nice res, but that bomb is surely going to end the, all the dreams. Ben Best, this is surely over. Copenhagen Flames now just cleaning up the rest of the DPS. Overtime clicking down, and Copenhagen Flames find their first win of the season. Absolutely. Taking the set here, but there's still a little bit to play for, Jaws. We still have one more map. It's going to be Escort. Question is, where are we going to go? Once again, it will be the choice of Young and Beautiful. Are they going to take us to the first Junker Town? That's the question. Likely, we're going to be going to Dorado, though. Yeah. I can imagine so. I would like to see a Junker Town at some point, because there are uh, some I need it, man. wacky strategies you can pull out. And I say wacky, I mean... May from Rai Jae Hong. Oh, yeah, the, exactly. The offensive May. The offensive May. A little bit of a hand touch there. We've already seen it. I know, right? <laughs> Keep it for later. Don't worry. And uh, you can see a lot of uh, variation in the playstyles, and I think it really does open up a lot of teams to actually show and kind of flex what they've got. Because yes, you can dive, 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 but there's also the possibility of protect the president, for example, on this bastion, or you can go offensive May. Although I think that's something that Soul Dynasty practice a heck of a lot to actually pull it and uh, be successful with it. And often when you see, oh, it is Junker Town. Look at it go, Jaws. We've got it. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Yes. I'm so happy. We've, okay. And what I want to see here, I want to see the Bastion because it's usually the flex support player who goes on the Bastion. Ding. On Bastion. He's pretty accurate with the orbs. How ac how more accurate can you, how would you need to be with a Bastion left click? Yeah. You can do orbs. How can you do a minigun? That's the question. Exactly. It's not like you just sit there and hold left click and just everybody else do the work for you as in heal you. There's a lot of skill in that Bastion. And Orisa is actually something that we've seen a little bit as well. And that's obviously a key part to that composition. We've seen it a little bit on Well. We've seen it on, I believe, Nepal mm. a little bit, I believe. I think we have seen it on Nepal because people yeah. have been trying to drag well, people off We saw Only God on Bastion on We Nepal. did. Actually, yes, we did. So we've seen a little bit of Bastion play, but <laughs> I wouldn't say it's the most optimal map, in all honesty. <laughs> Junker Town, definitely one of those maps. But uh, Orisa is, uh, is going to need to come out as well. Again, it just speaks to the uh, Copenhagen Flames in all honesty, their experience and their, just their ability to adapt on the fly also. They are very historied players in uh, other games like StarCraft, for example. They know how to scrim, they know how to practice, they know how to perform in these high pressure situations. Maybe they let their hair down a little bit now knowing they've won the series. I, I think Junkertown's definitely the right choice for Young and Beautiful here. You take your team here, when you feel like you're a little bit outclassed maybe, you're being 3-0'd, so time to pull some shenanigans, see if they can or cannot deal with it. Well, I hope so. We've also seen a lot of other... I want to keep talking about strategies in Junkertown because it is really interesting. It's incredibly the interesting. Amount of, uh, the amount of variety we do actually get. We also see double sniper, don't forget. Oh, we yeah, do see Hanzo, Hanzo Widowmaker. So that could also be a possibility. I there know, are honestly I know so many good at Hanzo. He could pull it out. I mean, he's a projectile with DPS player. Hmm. Pull it out. Hand, uh, we're waiting for you, Naga. <laughs> we're waiting for you to pull it out. Someone's going to pull out Hanzo at one point, and then Orisa's going to get one shot. And then someone's going to leave the game. Like, that, that's <laughs> going to happen. It's happened a couple of times to me before. A player has left your competitive match. Yeah.
Oh, That's not what you want to see. Big, big red window. Yeah, I did see a clip this morning, actually, of a Hanzo one-shotting in Orissa. In fact, I think it happened to Trid earlier. I oh. think it happened to Tim yesterday. Watch I like, looked over my shoulder, because our PCs are quite close to each other. I was like, he was like, oh, you know, kind of hitting his desk a little bit. I was like, oh, what's going on? He's just like, watch the kill cam. Right under the shield. 400 <laughs> damage, insta-kill. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm going to well, leave you to that one. We've been talking about all of these, uh, all of these compositions. Are they an omen? Brought to you by Omen, the official PC and display of Overwatch contenders. Well, in all honesty, I really don't hope they're an omen. <laughs> See, Marine Lord already flexing. He knows his know, time. I, I hope they're an omen. Omens are fantastic, Jaws. Well, Copenhagen Flames, they've got a variety of things they can pull out. Poppy Fresh and Marine Lord on this Bastion and the Widowmaker. It creates oh, a lot of space on. for the Widowmaker as well. Something else you've got to think about. And uh, Young and Beautiful have to think about as well because you are focusing on the Bastion at this point. You are just going, right, we need to kill this guy. He is like not dying. He can heal himself. He's and a big threat. Chubbs is going to be in front of him. And then we've got, uh, you've got multiple healers going to be Please pocketing as well. Please tell me real. I would also hope so. Show me Doomfist. It's very hard to actually take down a Widowmaker in that instance. It really relies on your Widowmaker doing extremely well and yeah. annihilating her first, and then it's a 5v6. And when, when you dive Widowmaker, you may look graceful going through the air as a Winston, but you can't have a shield move with you, I and mean, you are just a nice flying target for that uh, for that Bastion to just mow down. Exactly that. Now, I think Dempsey has actually kind of coordinated this already. Maybe he knows Copenhagen Flames are going for a Bastion. It's 10 seconds remaining and Marine Lord has switched off, so I can imagine they're not going for that. But Dempsey actually hacking the bottom right, uh, bottom left hand health pack is pretty important to uh, people that do want to do go, do go for these massive flanks, like Tracers, for example. So that actually screams to me. Poppy Fresh actually opting for the for the left hand side, if you look on his side of the map. Like. What I want to see here is Dempsey hack the health pack under where Ben Best is positioned at the moment and Danny try and play out of that room. You have so much survivability as a Roadhog with 600 HP, take a breather, and that hacked health back. You're just going to be impossible to take down, potentially. Marine Lord now being rather cheeky, just trying to find something. Th oh, oh, that was a very close. Beautiful goes golden by Ben Best. Nice hook, though. Chubbs is in a little bit of trouble. He goes golden himself. Does get healed up. Poppy Fresh actually takes down good stuff. Naga's actually going to find Ding with the oh, toxic Naga, red. What are you doing? Naga just got a triple headshot. Let's go. Marine Lord finds Danny as well. That's a team kill straight out of the gate for Copenhagen Flames. Oh, Naga, they have families. No cyberbullying, please. Now he's going to work it like only 65% as well. That's how little damage he's been like <laughs> taking people to the bodies. It's just been headshot after headshot after headshot. Dead, 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 dead. Here we go. Replay. There's the Coming replay. Through. Okay, so look at the Mercy going for the res. Going to try and find him in the back oh. line. They're just lining oh. up for him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> going to jump straight back into live though. Heiko. It's going to go down. Nice shield, actually. Good stuff. That actually enabled Ben Best to actually get rezzed here. He's going to have to set up on this cart. High ground doesn't seem like must, but making sure Chubbs can't set up his own shield. A Discord Orb is going to send him back. Danny is going to retake control. Also, oh, I feel like Dredro Dredro. Dredro. There. really dropping the ball in this case. Chubbs is going to be on his own though. Discord Orbs and laying upon by the defense of Young and Beautiful here. Swox has built himself up to an infra site, and he's going to be popping a little bit earlier than I anticipated here. Maybe he's making sure that Naga can't get in and get an early shot to open this one up. Look at the percentages, though. Naga just popping that emphasis as well. Both teams can see each other. They know where they are. But Chubbs, he has got that bongo ready and uh, ready to roll. Ooh, 56. Okay. Oh, I'm going to stop talking. Naga's doing the work for us. He's jumping up at the egg. We've got another one. No. There's no words that can just Naga, Naga, Naga. And Poppy Fresh just like, oh, hold my beer. He found oh. another one. <laughs> He's supercharged as well. This is the thing. He hits one headshot. It doesn't have to be powered up. He's one-shotting whoever lines up in his sights. Who is this man? He's really starting to show his stuff. Naga, projectile DPS. Guess what? I can also play a Widowmaker. Oh, yep. So, such a white hero, Paul, and uh, he's bringing them all to the bear today. However, young and beautiful, through this, have built themselves up five ultimates. They've got great engagement potential here with the Supercharger, with the Transcendence, with the EMP. Can they make it work? Dempsey here playing with fire. The question is, will he get burned? No, he's going to make a quick escape there before he manages to suffer for Wrath. Oh, that was really intelligent of him to make an escape there, just to make sure that he's very scared. Heiko's actually going to go down. Chubbs is moving forward, doesn't have that bongo available. Heiko's only just going to respawn. Maybe Young and Beautiful play a little bit more aggressive here, try and get a hook off on Chubbs, possibly. They're going to have to deal with this Tracer at some point. Poppy Fresh is just running rampant Ooh, over okay. people. Another beautiful hook. 
Winner Lim getting taken down. A little bit of revenge. Ben Best trying to cow behind the shield. What's the best way to do with Anrissa? Get behind her and take her out. A nice res onto Naga there. And once again, Copenhagen Flames just ignore Young and Beautiful's front line and take out Ben Best without him saying anything. And throughout that, Ding managed to hold on to his transcendence as well. I think he probably should have used that to try and win out that fight. But no, Naga's going to be taking him out with a headshot. Reenacting a couple of cinematics so lovingly crafted by Blizzard, adding to his Omnic kill tally. Naga, three emphasites, three fights. This guy's going to build his up pretty quickly. This is a bit of a strange one for Widowmaker. There's not as much room as there is outside to actually maneuver. But if the team can give him protection, like Chubbs is doing so gracefully, he might just be able to do it. There is the Transcendence from Ding to keep everybody alive. This could be the fight Young and Beautiful were looking for. But look what the positioning oh, okay. from Heiko. Just pushing everybody back with that whole hulk. Just making sure no one touches that bongo. Everybody's got the damage boost. Doesn't seem to mind all too much. They are going to be able to take control of the car. For those of you unaware of a stat, Supercharger does give you 50% extra damage, and that's equal to a nano boost. You can consider that one a nano whole hog for as far as the damage goes, and he surely showed Spox as where the damage goes, putting it right up his rear. Also, a small thing has got to keep in mind as well. The car actually gives a small bit of AoE healing. About 15. So, realistically, Hego's not going down. He's a chunky boy. Like He's he's a wide boy. He's not going to go down without a fight. And with that, standing and ducking it behind the shields, extremely hard to actually take him out. In fact, I'll tell you who is hard to take out. Nark. Spox cannot land anything. He's been pocketed so, so hard and so, so well by the support duo from Copenhagen Flames. Three-man dive and Copenhagen Flames are still pushing on forward. Nargis picked up yet another. It's just a body shot to Ben Best. Warning shots, setting him aflame. And now Heiko is just going to be trying to win this one out on the cart. And it started moving once again. Young and Beautiful forced to regroup. They have not lost a fight as of yet. Copenhagen Flames are right here, right now, wanting to send a message. They are not to be messed with in contenders. They do not want to be pushed around. Young and Beautiful, oh. a little bit out of place. Ding, one of those people. Oka's finally going to get jumped on the Primal Rage. We'll bat him around. <laughs> he's trying to get him away from the Mercy, but the healing is just too great. I'm in hacked. fact, he's having to run off here and maybe save his supports, who are just getting demolished in the battle line. Poppy Fresh finds the D-Mech. He finds the Pulse Bomb onto Gustav. Naga finally falls, but at what cost? Absolutely on the cart. It's all Copenhagen Flames. In comes EMP and Ben Best is the last one to get onto the cart. Gustav is oh. being a brave, brave boy, but Heiko's there with the catch. Can anyone get on? No, they cannot. Straight out of the gate. Hook, line, and a left click. There we go. Heiko unlocks the whole hog at the end just to push everybody back. Copenhagen Flames didn't lose a single fight. They also didn't stop that cart from rolling. Three points with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. That is a very respectable time bank. How do you counter Naga? At this point, honestly, I've got no idea. Uh, they dived him with two tanks and a Genji. And Naga was just like, eh, I'll be over here. Don't I'll be, I'll be cool. just, just chilling. Copenhagen it Flames keeping their cool. He was pocketed both of those times as well. The Mercy wasn't even helping the front line. They committed so much in order to get so little. Now Young and Beautiful, it's their turn to actually go on the offensive. Ben Best saving the pick for rather close to actually when the game starts. You've got to pick something, buddy, otherwise... Uh, it's okay, they're, they're, they're on party. offense now. He's got some time to play around. Copenhagen Flames going to be setting up on the defense. Marine Lord once again bringing out that Sombra. I was completely looking at the wrong time. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you guys. Fully bamboozled by the F UI. Fully bamboozled, yes. It's getting a bit late. Let's not lie to ourselves here. The guys have had... Uh, well, all of us have had a, a very, very long day. And the what time is playing Half well. 12? God knows. God knows, I haven't got my phone on me. But on the offensive on Young and Beautiful. Now, Spox, I can't imagine he's actually gonna uh, change off of this Widowmaker. He has to deal with Naga, and the best way to deal with a Naga, a Naga? That's a race and wow. Best way to deal with <laughs> Naga himself is to actually one-shot him because there is no consistent damage output that Young and Beautiful could put down that actually took him out of the fight entirely. So. Spock says, I'm not too surprised him staying on this one. Ben Best, not sure he's going to stick on the Torb, but Ding's going to have to be very careful. I think they're going to have to play this one slow and steady. Yeah, Naga's gritting his teeth and dealing with sustained damage. You need to put it all in one burst, and that's going to be down to Spox's here on the offense. Question is, will he be able to get anything done? There's a control turret right in the spawn there, courtesy of a Torb. You're making sure that you're not going to get spawn count. It's a solid strat. Okay, fair play. I was like, <laughs> is it? Wait, he's running Torp? Great. I was really excited. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, the dream is gone. The first Torp in uh, in Contenders will be Contentorp. 
<laughs> However, it's going to be it'll, best it'll be Danny something. here. Going up against their counterparts in the tanking role. Naga looking for an early shot. He's got his eyes here on Ding. He's already hit a body shot, and Ding's forced to hide behind the cart. Will he be able to survive for long? Yeah, this is the problem now. Naga's not even playing the high ground here. Is so Jirijo can actually give him that damage move, give him the bump, uh, punch of health as well. He's actually hiding behind the shield. Jirijo actually raises Poppy Fresh. Naga finds Ding as well behind the cart. He's got all the space in the world now. Did try and almost actually failed the hook there. Didn't actually get on top of the high ground where he wanted to. Didn't seem to matter at all. The Hog just being and doing what Hog does best. Oh, okay. MC. The double tap. Yeah. No he messing. Was, uh, he went in invis, but if you hit someone in invis, they br glimmer slightly, and you can just take their head clean off, and exa that's exactly what he did. Just do. follow the sparkles, Jaws. Follow the sparkles. <laughs> and there is the Infrasight. He's going to know exactly where this oh. somber is. Oh, no. Ooh. Sparks is, you've got to watch out, buddy. You've got to watch out. He's not quite finding the shots. They know exactly where he is now, so they can play a little bit more cautiously. Poppy Fresh starting the fight off clean yet again. Ben Best is going to go down. Gustav is going to get the res, but look at Poppy Fresh. Always on the back line, always hunting, searching for his next bit of prey. And that prey is going to be a Widowmaker. He's getting healed off for the time being, laying down the defensive Venom Mine, but it's going to get chined on yet again. Beautiful communication, actually, by Young and Beautiful to actually say that you're in trouble there. It's very quick for the Mercy to quickly tuck round, click, uh, click and hold that left click to make sure you stay alive. Life. Absolutely, and while we were focused on that uh, 2v1 in the back row there, Young and Beautiful managed to wipe Copenhagen, Copenhagen Flames right off the map. And now they are moving in towards a first point capture here, but there is going to be a contest coming through from Copenhagen Flames. Naga's being damage boosted as well. He's actually oh, doing okay. the 1v1. Dredro slid his way out from underneath cover, but Spox has had something to say. Danny's going to find the supercharger and its counterpart in the Orissa. Naga and Poppy Fresh but still no want to contest, car. but no one was on the car. A true C9, even the EMP from Dempsey is available, gives in the SMG whip. Bernie will end up going down. Four minutes on the clock as well. Pretty respectable time, but the ultimate economy is definitely in favor of Young and Beautiful. Dempsey's going to wreak havoc with that EMP. And crucially now, Dempsey has the territory control over that large health pack. That's what Marine Lord really wanted to try and make sure that Chubbs and Heiko would have additional survivability as they played around this corner. But now Ben Best and Dan, you're in control. They've posted up on that corner. Their territory is known. And now Dempsey can bring them all down with an EMP. It's time to turn off the lights, Jaws. Oh, there's the pulse bomb yet again to start off the fight. Ben Best is just having a night mare of a game. He cannot escape the tracer, <laughs> and Ding can't escape the shots from Naga either. She's got the wall hacks. Doesn't quite find the head of the Mercy. This guy is uh, popping off, as you will. Just click on the heads. Ooh! Ooh Spokes okay. He gets some revenge. He's on the Genji now. This is what we want to see. Something to contest Naga, but Jiridro's there with the rest. Nice one. Spox is caught out there by Naga. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a halt and pulled into the shot. Not going to be able to do much about that when you've spent your deflect already. And now look at this aggressive defense here from Copenhagen Flames. They're going to make Young and Beautiful pay for every meter that they make in blood. Dempsey with the ultimate also. EMP wasn't actually used. He still needs in, to be able to... Bank, still in the bank. Still in the bank, exactly. Heiko's going to have oh, his there as well. Is. There's the EMP. Finds That's four, but he's going to go down anyway. Heiko's taking a lot of damage here. He's going to be able to duck behind this corner. I'm not sure he's going to be able to survive. Only just! That was sub 100 HP. Ends up getting up. Might just get taken down by Spoxes in the 1v1. But it's all up to Naga now. Needs to be able to defend this card with his life. Now Spoxes finds his revenge for a second time. They're going to be able to find an extra bit of time on the cart as well. Wakey, wakey, Spox. It's time to rise and shine, young and beautiful. Are you going to be able to bring it into the third point is the question. Spox is almost with a blade here, 92%. Going to try and hit a couple of shurikens so he can maybe close this one out. There's going to be no support ultimate to stop him, but he may well get EMP'd by Marine Lord. And we do have a pause here, Jaws. Yeah, very, very brief pause. Recollect your thoughts. And you can recollect your thoughts as well. Now, Danny, we spoke about him at the start of the game. And the desk spoke about him as well. A very highly motivated player. Says he does very, very well when his team just, you know, Say he's a prodigy. I mean, I would do pretty well too if someone said I was a prodigy, but this guy really does. He's just so receptive to the feedback as well, being such a young player. And Lint, being his older brother as well, playing for a different team is only going to help. As Boxes is going to open up the play, there is Naga. He's going to fall. Oh. They found the key. Midway to success. through the MP. Oh, Midway that was through. such perfect timing. Beautiful cleanup by Spox. They should just be able to clean this fight up. Spox has found the answer, and that is the Genji. Oh, Marine Lord tried to turn them all off, but he was turned off himself midway through the slice. EMP came out, and just uh, the cast time was too long. It's almost instant, but Spox is just with a perfect timing. Now it's going to be Naga up against Spox. It's going to be a battle of the cybernetic ninjas who's going to win out in this little shuriken duel. Eventually, potentially a blade duel as well. 
Yeah, they are pretty close in ultimate charge times as well. So whoever gets theirs first will surely be unleashing it first. Danny just trying to make sure he uh, gets rid of those. Well, for as much as he can. Very, very cheeky. Actually, Gustav's going to get jumped on the back line. They're actually separating the supports here. But Gustav with a spectacular play is going to amp it up around the corner to keep everybody alive for the time being. <laughs> oh, Great fight in close space isn't going to help you now. Not when you've got a primal raging monkey on top of your face. Dempsey tried to get a few couple of bullets in there, but it got instantly deflected by Naga. They're going to be able to clean out the fight. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock remaining. Copenhagen Wolves in a very, very good position. And once again, we see Copenhagen Flames coming in with this incredibly aggressive defense. They don't want to give any quarter for free here already. Chubbs is in. He's going pretty low, but he's going to have to back up for healing. But Naga's going around the back. He's almost built himself up a blade. Spox is at 73%. Naga's at 94 This is exactly what we talked about a second ago. Blade's going to get unleashed. Dink can't save him now, but Spox is finds the Dash in the end takes him out, but who is really yet? Yeah, Ding's pretty dead. Yeah, we, we, we got that culture dismantled. <laughs> exactly. Dempsey is going to find them with the pulse bomb, but he isn't actually going to use it just yet. He managed to take out Marine Lord with the pistol whip, and that will be just him. Just uh, maybe. Oh, going back here. Oh, back Ding. Ding. He didn't need any help. <laughs> Dempsey, get back to the point. I've got Poppy Fresh. No worries. Poppy Fresh thought he'd caught out Ding, but no, he was actually caught out. You're exactly where I want you. He said. And Ding, having won that fight, he's basically earned himself a transcendent, so why not? That's a reward, my son. Great play. Marine Lord now. He's nearing that EMP. In fact, he's got it. Poppy Fresh has got that pulse bomb. We're ready. He's hacked. It looked like he was trying to go for the blade. No healing for you. And that should be a clean sweep for... Uh, I was going to say Young and Bugle. They're going to get clean sweep. Copenhagen and Wolves cleaning up the rest of the fight. Poppy Fresh with another pulse bomb already. And what we should really notice here is that when you run this Sinyata and the Lucio combo with the new Sombra changes, once you get EMP'd, there is no healing on that team whatsoever. You cannot bring out the Harmony Orbs. You cannot use the Aura of Healing. Everyone, all damage taken is permanent. It's like you're landing a giant nade. Absolutely. There is the Transcendence that didn't get used last time around. The cutting, the slicing, the dicing, unsheathing the dragon, trying to find the kills. He finds the d -mech, exactly what he was after. Oh, the shurikens narrowly avoiding Marine Lord. They are going to be able to clean the rest of the fight up, however. Dempsey is going to pick up Chubbs. That's actually a little bit of a stagger there as well. Chubbs isn't going to be around for the crucial last seconds of this. The DPS are actually going to have to engage first. Absolutely, but this is the toughest fight of the entire map. We're so close to the spawn of Copenhagen Flames. We have to Time to get together. They're going to come in with Dredo with that speed boost and the healing to boot. But here come the ultimates. Naga unleashes the blade, but no. Spox is once again dashes through him and takes him out. Dempsey's going to find Higo. The bomb on the <laughs> car was beautiful. Spox and Danny pay for it with their life. And the beat from Gustav might have dance. just saved it. The Danish twins in the support duo are going to be able to take the round. Although only a minute left on the clock. Dean and Gustav at the end, so clutch in getting those support ults. And of course, because they finished in overtime, they are given a minute on this escort map to see just how far they can push that payload. However, because they are given a minute, Copenhagen Flames are too. They're going to be sitting on a 3 minute and 32 time back. Very close to about 3 minute 33. They had on Hanamura. I think we're building up a theme here, Jules. I think we are. Who'd have thought it? 3 today is our lucky number, although it's gone down to 332. Got to go fast. Well, maybe they rounded it down. I'm not really sure what happened there. They lost a second, but hey, it's just how things work, I guess. But now, they're going to beautiful. Obviously, on the offense this time around. What are they going to do here? What, what can they really change up? Dempsey was the big factor in those fights, in all honesty. Midway through the game, he started finding the pace, and he really started to come alive in the Sombra. Later on, just kind of switched out and didn't really touch it at all. And that was where Copenhagen Flames come online. Marine Lord was then that Sombra player that was really taking over the game. Do you really think here that Dempsey just, just stick on the Sombra throughout the entire map and actually just counter Marine Lord in that respect? Dempsey's doing a fantastic job on the summer, but like we said, we were wondering what Young and Beautiful would try and change up on their attack, but I think Copenhagen Flames trying to preempt them. They're not going to run the same defense again. They're going to be incredibly close with this triple tank, the Slambulance. Marine Lord's going to be there with the healing from the Moira Drydro with the speed boost. Question is, are they going to be able to remove Young and Beautiful from the car early? they got the sneaky beaver shoes on. They're ready to creep around the corner. Not so creeping now. They're going to jump straight on the cart. They know they haven't got a lot of time left, so they need to do something. They need to do something fast. Ben Bess already gets taken out by Chubbs. That's going to be a nice sight from Spox. It's on Dredro. He forces Danny back already. A nice couple of right clicks. We'll find a couple of heads, but no important damage has been taken just yet. Young and Beautiful also need swaps. to be able to just do something here in order to solidify their offense. Spox is actually changing over to the junk right here to chunk them out before they go in for that all-in engage. Absolutely. He wants to try and build up a 
Riptire as fast as possible. There's no pretty reliable way of taking out on the side of Copenhagen Flames, but he's not building up that quickly. Dempsey's already under so much pressure here, he's going to eventually get healed up, and there's an engagement coming through from Copenhagen Flames. Copenhagen Flames had to go in now. Gustav actually gets hammered to the ground as Cubs just comes up. Massive Ben Best falls as well, and you can see Danny, he's just taking all the fire in the world, looking around, wondering where his team's gone. Your team's nowhere to be found, my friend. You've already chugged your drink. The bomb's going to come off too to stop anybody from getting on the cart. <laughs> Gustav takes it. Danny goes down as well. It's up to Dempsey. It's up to Ding to now stay alive on the car. Ben Best, he knows he can't hold the shield up for long. Not after those flanking maneuvers from Copenhagen. Flames, they're moving in very close. Even Shubs now getting extremely from aggressive. Ty is going to come in, finds Dredro in the end. A pin ends up missing, but the Ted body launches against the floor instead. The health advantages are in favor of the Copenhagen Flames. That, uh, that uh, grabbed on search actually got Aiton as well. Heiko just came up big, but Danny came up bigger. Overtime ticked down, and it didn't matter in the end. The flames they should end up securing it 38 meters in the bank and they've got breath, three Take minutes to work with <laughs> what a fight everyone throwing everything they had there flesh bones bodies ultimates health it was all put on the line in that final fight there and eventually copenhagen flames came out on top one minute was spent by young and beautiful and 38 meters is all that they gained and now copenhagen flames have a significant time bank to try and do a little bit better this is where you pull out i don't want to call it cheats <laughs> the different the strategies no, you can't just name it a different cheese. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> it's still a type of cheese. No, Cheddar? I want to see Young and Beautiful pull out something interesting that we've never seen before. They are going for kind of a, a similar-ish comp to what Copenhagen Flames are doing. I want to see the mayor. I want to see something that's really going to disrupt the front line and catch Copenhagen Flames off guard. Because right now, there's nothing really too surprising about the way Young and Beautiful are playing. They're playing it very methodically in that way. You can definitely tell they're regimented in the way they play the game. However, there's no real pizzazz. There's no real spice coming out of there. No surprise picks either. We want to see some cayenne pepper plays here. Get real nice and spicy up in here from the side of Young and Beautiful. But it's going to be Copenhagen Flames bringing the heat today. Drydro is going to be there. Or Dredro, rather, pardon me, on the Bastion. But no, it's actually going to be a swap over to the Mercy. My hopes and dreams shattered. But it will be Naga coming out. That was actually quite clever. Um, a Poppy Fresh sent out the Sonic Arrow just to make sure no one was hiding around the corner. Marine Lord already goes down. Hang on a minute. Spox has already found two. They're going to shove them straight off the court. Ben Vess is just holding down the left click. Why wouldn't you at this point? They wipe three. Poppy Fresh finds the revenge. Naga goes down, who was on the, <laughs> who was on the Bastion. He changed at the last second there. Cart's are already rolling back. Three minutes, though. Realistically, Copenhagen Flames go going to be able to recollect their thoughts. Question is, where do Young and Beautiful set up now? They're not going to be able to potentially make that kind of engagement again. And now Naga is out on the junk crate. He's going to punish any undue aggression from the side of Young and Beautiful. But he's only just spawning. It's going to take him a little while to actually get back to the point. Going to leave Naga a lot of time to just farm this ult. Already at 40%. The Grafton. Oh, okay. Ready? The Earth Shatter. Are you kidding me? Dempsey's just trying to defend his team. Another Shatter comes out, but it's going to get permanently blocked by Chubbs. Chubbs, the hero of it all, ends up falling regardless. Regardless to Dempsey, who's just sitting in the front line, taking all the damage, taking all the brunt, and is nearly fully charged. They're on a hair of time now. No Two minutes and 30 chances. seconds. Hair of, I think <laughs> I should say, three meters remaining. It is going to start to roll back now. There is no real key ultimates apart from that coalescence coming out from Marine Lord. Absolutely. But Naga is almost there with that all-important Riptire. Chubbs already taking a little bit of damage here. Ben Best trying to swing into him. Here comes the coalescence to try and back him up. Yeah, they try and open it now. Haker's already going to fall. 86%. That's pretty big. Grapple on going to come out regardless. Dempsey's found three. Gustav picks up a couple with the boot. They should just be able to clean the rest of the fight up. They should just be able to eradicate the rest of the members. Although, Poppy Fresh being a little bit of a nuisance. Oh, they Danny, just... not right there. Not right <laughs> Not in the trap. Got his leg a little bit caught, but he's going to be able to wiggle free. But attrition is in the favor of Copenhagen Flames. Everyone's going to be coming out, and Gustav has been blown straight away. There's the Graviton Surge. Oh, Graviton Surge right on top of the car. Naga finds two, and he's going to be able to not even find oh, charge when he gets it in just the end in anyway. time. Oh, beautiful play from Naga. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, all I heard was rip tire, rip tire, grab after grab, fire in all of the holes.